Good bright and early morning, boys and girls. Thanks for stopping back into the channel today, right here at the Rust Belt Mechanic. Here, we're uh, getting ready to hop into the side-by-side -side and go on a special little trip today. If you guys remember, way back, we bought the crappy smoking Chrysler 300 that would just fog out pretty much everything. Well, after leaving the dealership, I had to do something with it, so ended up putting it over at a buddy of mine's shop. Well, he's got to look into it over the last week or so, so we're going to look into that one and go through exactly what we're going to be doing with that car here on the channel. <laughs> guys here she is the beauty the Chrysler 300 C Hemi all-wheel drive and as we can see my good buddy here is already uh, taking things apart and what he ended up finding was the reason that we had all of that issues with smoking and fogging was we were just pulling all the oil through the PCV system if you guys don't know here in the Hemis they run the PCV system here in the intake manifold uh, so the valve it is interchangeable right there but it ended up being cracked in between the vacuum areas where they're uh, pulling in air from the outside to there in the oil in the PCV so it just sucking straight oil down in the motor it's classic big old fog machine so thankfully he was able to find one of these at a junkyard so cool on that one got it all fired up ends up still pretty much a major misfire we're at cylinder seven obviously it's going to be the back one on the driver's side the hardest one to get to but he ended up getting the valve cover off look back there at the uh, valve springs because those are one of those normal things that are capable of breaking in do snap especially on a motor with 230,000 miles on it but ends up those are actually not broken next thing that comes to mind is all right is the cam messed up so Ended up turning the motor over by hand, and then you watch your uh, rocker arms here because it still is a push rod motor, and you kind of watch and measure to see how far each one of these valve springs depress and compress back up. And if they're the same on either one and comparable to the other ones, then more than likely our lobes on our cam are okay too, which in this case, it seems to be that way. Come down to the diagnostics that we can see all this Enhance. shiny glittery stuff down Enhance. in here. Uh, that's what was in the coolant. So my guess with that and all this crappy coolant that was in it, somebody's chasing down a leak or an internal leak issue. And I'm betting that we probably have a head issue. <clears throat> so probably we've got a cracked head inside of here. So that's what we're kind of looking at so far engine and power plant wise and today we're just going to kind of go through the rest of it and get a parts list of everything that we're going to do because i think in this video series what we're going to end up doing is doing something kind of crazy and different i think we're going to buy everything literally off amazon i literally can't even i know in the last video series on the cheap caddy build i just looked all over ebay and everything like that to try to find um all the cheapest parts that we could ended up probably getting about 85 percent of stuff off of rockauto.com so this time we're going to be going through amazon and finding everything that we can literally buying every part off of amazon might be a little sketchy, but I think it'll turn out fun. In this one, but let's go through the rest of the car, see what we can find. Body-wise, we can see is a uh, kind of rough here in the front end, a little bit on the beat up side. What the f side. Those fog lights are definitely not doing anything. They're busted up. Headlights don't look all that great. So we might look into some of those and this fascia is uh, 
pretty bad if we're if we get into the point that we're wanting to do any kind of body stuff. Uh, it just depends on, I guess, what we find underneath here. All right, first off, things that I'm seeing, <laughs> these uh, bushings for the sway bar are gone. They are destroyed, so that and the uh, bushings and ball ends here on the links are gone, so rattles in the front end. I bet this thing has lots of them, so we're gonna need some new sway bar links, some new bushings. Looking in through the front, I think just from what we had with the radiator and everything to do with that, these radiator mounts are, the bushings are gone on those, and I think we just need to put a new radiator in it, to be totally honest. So, new radiator, put that one on the list. All wheel drive system. How we look in here, it's like, we well, I got some greasy leaks, but those boots are blown out. From the axles and everything here. And grab this. It ain't got no gas in it. We can see stuff just kind of blown away up in here. So little leaks here and there on that one. Uh, no major leaks really on the engine or anything like that. Looks like you guys had some valve cover leaks that's coming down this side. Okay. Yeah, that would be that one. But again, new valve cover gaskets and heads and everything in the rebuild. Looking at that one. Well, I've tinkered around on them a little bit. Those tie rod ends are junk. So we're gonna need us uh, some tie rods. They got inner and outer tie rod kits for these that are pretty cheap. So we'll probably just end up getting those. Brakes, obviously, you guys can see how long this thing's been sitting out in the middle of a freaking field, it looks like. Um, yeah, good thing. Came with a bunch of parts in the trunk of the car. We'll see that here in a little bit. One of the things it did come with was brakes. So, cool thing there. Looking back, the trans. You got a Nag 1 trans, which is pretty good for these. Um, not seeing any kind of external leaks or anything like that. Not beat up or anything, so we might just end up doing a service there. One of the little retainers is off of the line for some reason, but I don't know. Usually these things leak right here, which got a little bit of a seepage at the connector, but those adapters are like five bucks to replace. Nothing big there. A transfer case. Looks pretty good. The mount is all intact. It is not pulled apart on that one, which means somebody's probably replaced it at one time or another. Here's the place that I was worried about was all these brake lines and stuff, but for some reason, they look to be in pristine shape. All right. No more bend in brake lines or anything. These rockers are all pretty decent on the inside. Here at the corners are yeah, eh, take that back. That one's kind of, yeah, not so great there, but not bad, not bad. Rear end, let's look back here. Brakes, okay. It's like the control arm bushings. We got a lot of surface rust on a lot of the cradle back here, but really not too bad. This hardware even looks like it'll uh, come loose for doing alignments and such, actually. Not too bad, it just looks like a whole bunch of surface rust. So it looks pretty good there. Rear shocks are eh, eh, so-so. And these bushings here on the rear sway bar links, those are not so bueno. So we're gonna need some rear links, maybe some rear shocks. Go for that one. And then, of course, the one thing that I knew was gonna need is axle seals here in the rear. If anybody knows about these IFS rear differentials in any of the LX bodies, they always, always leak in the axle seals. Never fails, always do. Freaking just junk. So unfortunately to be able to do that, you've got to lower a bunch of stuff down, including the entire cradle, which our cradle bolts look eh, okay. Okay in that area to be able to get these two bolts out to drop the rear diff on this one. Not horrible, but you know, not really that fun because you also have to drop the exhaust and the drive shaft and then you drop the whole differential out. So we got that. Obviously tires junk all the way around. So all wheel drive ones. Looks like we're 225-6018s. Gonna need us a new set of tires and these wheels are nasty. Pitted. Pitted, so pitted like that. Corroded. 
I don't know. We'll see about doing something with those. Obviously we saw the rust and the cancer in our fenders all the way up and around. So yet to decide on what to do with that one. But outside of that, I mean, this thing is really not too horrible driveline wise. And a lot of the stuff that it really does need is not a lot of the really expensive stuff that needs replaced. All right. Actually, I'm pretty impressed. So let's look lower down and uh, see what else we can find. All right, back here in the trunk, we got us a uh, nice bit of parts back here. We've got two front axles. We've got a hub and a pair of rotors and a set of pads, which I believe are for the front. And smells like a friendly cat had been sitting in here at one time. Oh, yeah, no, maybe no. urinated in here once or twice, but that's all right. That's all right for an old shitty car. Kind of expect some crazy stuff like that. Tail lights are in good condition. All of our rear fascia and bumper trim are bubbled up and junk on there. And again, more of the cancer on this side. More of that. The clear coat's gone here on the car. Not too bad up on the roof and everything. Oop. That door's locked. I like them French fried potatoes. Mm -hmm. We have power? No. <laughs> it's all right. Magic of movie editing. Looks like that door is uh, gonna be a task. That'll be something down the line because that door won't open. But I mean, passenger rear, eh, who needs the passenger rear side? Honestly, inside. I don't know who thought it'd be cool, but all of this stick on wood vinyl interior. Evidently that was a cool thing back in like the early 2000s. I don't know so much anymore. Back seat is in pretty good condition. No rips, tears, or stretches. All the light color leather interior to it, so not too bad. The carpet also not bad in the rear, just dirty, yucky dirty and nasty so not too bad there now let's look up front oh my God. in the front looks like our passenger seat is good but our driver's seat eh, seen the better days the back looks good but the base is gone totally chewed up and gone thankfully also the side bolsters and the plastic is in good condition which is also a rare thing that you see on these chryslers usually they're busted up pretty bad as well we can also see that our right rear is reading zero psi on the tire pressure and the other sensors are actually reading so we might be all right on the actual sensors in it so good deal there all this stuff Stick on vinyl stuff everywhere. <laughs> Hemi C, baby. <laughs> oh, that's nuts. The top of the dash looks good. Door panels actually all look good. Missing some of their hardware and stuff. Probably somebody getting in there to change out speakers or we can see there's some holes there for a switch or something. So on the interior, it looks like for the most part, I don't know if I'll do anything with the door panel, but uh, we will do something to fix this part of the seat, fix that one up. Uh, maybe a new heated seat element for this seat as well because it's pretty darn squished down and see about getting a seat foam for it as well. Other than that, I'm surprised our center console looks pretty good and everything too. Last thing, all the way around, these door handles in classic fashion of Chrysler's, they're all messed up. This one on the other side, I think this one's about ready to snap off and be done too. So all new door handles. That surprisingly also is very cheap as well on Amazon. Like the set of those is only like $60. So not that big of a deal. Household food food and household food. Check. <laughs> all right guys we're back home got our list all kind of added up here and we've got a lot of shopping to do uh, if we want to make this 300 worth anything we're gonna have a lot of work under our hands here so 
what we're going to do is I think it was just going to be something really cool just to show all in one place that you can buy everything just as cheap as you possibly can on Amazon. So I think that's what we're going to do for this build. Everything bought on Amazon uh, and we're going to see how much stuff we can get it. Now we're going to leave it up to you guys on what you guys want to I guess cap this one off at. Uh, the last project that we did was uh, the project Cheap Caddy. Cheap freaking caddy, man. It turned out really good, and we ended up with the cost of the car and everything putting right at $2,000 into that one. This one, also putting 500 bucks into it on the initial purchase. We've got about 1500 bucks in wiggle room to be able to buy all the parts that we need. Uh, and so I think we're going to be able to get a lot more parts than you guys think that we're going to be able to on Amazon. It's it's pretty crazy just the initial look that I had on what kind of stuff that I'll be able to get for really, really good prices. So down in the comments below, I want you to leave some uh, ideas on where you guys want to see this project go. Do you want to cap it off at two grand? Just start there. See what kind of a build we can do in comparison with the uh, cheap freaking caddy build. Uh, I think that throughout the winter here here in Ohio, which is you know pretty crappy, I don't really want to get my truck too salted up, but you know it is there and I still do drive it pretty much daily. But if I were to have this one all ready to go, Hammy all wheel drive here in Ohio, it would definitely help out so I'm gonna at least be able to keep it through the winter I'm gonna have to definitely get some tires on it that's for sure you can't drive around with those junk tires so got to be able to get everything done here in the next couple of weeks so leave your comments below on what you guys think we need to look for in the future with this project and where you guys want to see it go maybe you guys want to see something a little bit crazier after the initial 2000 but I think for the initial cost of two thousand dollars with the car and all the parts I think we'll be doing pretty good on the build if you guys have any other questions about any other builds or anything that you want to see here on the channel, please feel free to email me at therustbeltmechanic at gmail.com or message me anytime over at Instagram, Rust Belt Mechanic over there. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. Thanks, and as always, you guys stay awesome. Oh, no, no.